Okay. So uh, the final thing that I want to talk about before we uh, let you loose on the exercise is the atomics in HIP. So at the time of writing, support for atomic functions don't appear to be well documented. Uh, that may have changed now um, with the latest rockham.docs.amd.com. So the documentation um, is down in the chat, rockham.docs.amd.com. Um, and support for atomics may have improved by that time. So in CUDA, there is support for functions like atomic add that provide atomic operations. And what I mean by atomic is that um, sometimes you may only want to increment, for example, you may only want to do um, one operation and guarantee that that operation happens exclusive of other threads. So maybe some threads would like to accumulate to a particular value. If you want to ensure that um, this accumulation happens atomically, um, you, there is some atomic functions in HIP. Okay, so I've got a, a program called atomics.cpp. And what that does, it's a very simple kernel called a, atomic test. Um, that uh, increments a counter. So a counter is defined in global memory. So using hip malloc, I just allocate some memory for a counter, and I set that memory to zero. And then I just enqueue a kernel. Um, I have a yep, I have a block size of eight by eight and I have a grid size of uh, 256 by 256. So there should be um, 65536. Um, there should be 65536 uh, instances of a kernel. And they should all atomically increment that single value. So I've got my code here that launches the kernel. The block size is 8 by 8. The global size is 256 by 256. And the I've got my atomic, um, so my, my atomic add call inside the kernel. So if everything works well, the counter should be incremented 65536 times, and indeed it is. Okay, um, there is some notes on using atomics with fine-grained memory access. And so you can click on this link here. Hopefully it takes you somewhere still valid. And yes, you can click you can click on that link, which is some lessons about using atomics. Um, okay, so the atomics described above use a slow software defined method of synchronization, synchronization to ensure atomicity. There is a faster version of atomic, of hardware atomics that can be enabled by setting a hip CC compiler flag. Um, M unsafe FP atomics. Uh, it is vital though to ensure that the hardware backing, uh, so the global memory allocation, it is vital to use hardware atomics only when you are sure the global memory is using coarse grained memory. Okay, so if you are using the global memory allocation from perhaps managed memory, um, or pinned memory, which allows for simultaneous access from the host, and you've got fine-grained um, memory synchronization enabled, then the atomics can silently fail <laughs> and produce incorrect results. So there's just a bit of a caveat there. Um, 
fine grained memory access occurs when pin memory is allocated with the hip host malloc coherent flag. So that's the default, um, or when managed memory is allocated without a follow up call to the call screen hip mem advice. So, um, yeah, so there we go. So if you're using um, Atomics, there is a faster way, but there is also a potential problem with using with using atomics with fine grained um, memory access. Okay, all right. So that concludes um, the memory management section. So just to recap, we talked about the different memory spaces. Um, we talked about pitched memory allocations and pencils. We talked about how to allocate and deallocate pitched memory and how to use that from a kernel, how to use pitched memory from a kernel, how to initialize memory. Then we talked about the zero copy allocations. Um, so zero copy allocations, there's no need um, to <clears throat> explicitly copy memory. And the two uh, zero copy allocations are uh, pinned memory and managed memory. So that's pinned memory and managed memory. And we talked about a number of different ways to use that memory. There was an example of using pinned memory and uh, managed memory. So using, using pinned memory and managed memory for matrix multiplication. So we ran those, those examples and when you're using managed memory, we had to check that managed memory was supported. Then scrolling down, we then moved on to explicit memory transfers. So there's um, a way to do it with contiguous memory copies, but then if you wish, there's also rectangular copies. And the rectangular copies can be done with hip mem copy 2D or hip mem copy 3D. And I talked about the number of different or the huge variety of things that you have to set up in order for a hip mem copy 3D to be successful. And um, there's an example in Matamult Pitch Mem how to do that. Okay. Um, Moving down, we then discussed shared memory. So private memory, global memory, constant memory, then shared memory, and how we could use shared memory to, um, yeah, how we could use shared memory in a matrix multiplication code. We talked about how to do uh, shared memory statically and dynamically and we used shared memory in a matrix multiplication example, ran the application. We saw what happens if you request too much shared memory in your dynamic memory allocation. And then we moved on to vectors. And this led to an implementation of our matrix multiplication that used um, vectors as well as shared memory. And it'd be great to see how this performs in lesson seven. So lesson seven, which is the next one, um, contains uh, the results of these different implementations. So what effect they have on the, um, on the performance of your kernels. And then finally, we talked about atomics and there is this gotcha. Um, I don't know if it's been fixed yet, but but there's this gotcha with atomic memory access. Okay, so do we have any questions with regards to that module? Any questions or comments? Okay, fantastic. So the, in the time that we have uh, left, and you're welcome to work on this in your own time, we're going to work on uh, one of the exercises for this um, one of the exercises for this. Now you can choose 
you can choose which exercise you want. Um, you can, there is an exercise that is associated with this lesson. So lesson six. And I'm just going to cover that now. And um, I might also cover the correlation exercise. Um, yeah, now let's, let's cover the correlation exercise tomorrow. I'll just cover lesson six, the exercise associated with lesson six.